there we go. Hey everybody, it's Kara and um, we are, I don't even know what episode we're on, in the 30s now. It's going really quickly, which is amazing. And I have somebody who I've, I met at Date With Destiny for like a few minutes. We hugged and then we went and did our, all of the crazy shit we did at Date With Destiny and we kept in touch and I'm following her religiously. Her name is Mandy Perry and she is a fucking firecracker and like if you've never seen anybody who shows up on their Facebook lives with raw, absolute, intense passion, this girl is it. She's amazing. And I'm so excited to have a chat with her. Um, so welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Griffin. I feel like the when we met, I already knew we were going to stay connected. It was just one of those, I see you, I see you, got you. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep. It was good. I'm so so I, I wanted to start recording because I, I don't want to miss anything. Um, so I think... The first thing I want to I want to hear from you is I, I know you you're super open about where you were four years ago yesterday actually which was a celebration so congrats but tell everybody um, you're a strong woman in business and that's this podcast is about strong women in business defining or being able to redefine or rediscover their feminine energy and still kick ass in business because it's a balancing act especially for women like us I come from adversity I've been on in housing I've had to get um, help from the government I've all, done it all I was a single mom at 20 all that shit same thing and so we come to this with a very different set of skills which is our masculine energy so tell us a bit about your business tell us where you came from how you got here and then we'll kind of dig into it from there well you know I grew up it's funny because with the mask I think the toughest thing that's the toughest thing I had to learn was femininity I mean out of everything when I first started learning, I was like, huh, what is this? And I think in part, you just nailed it. I mean, I think in part it's because there was so much trauma, so much abuse, you know, I mean, to the point where I had attempted suicides, antidepressants. I mean, it's just, just a, a long history up to my thirties of just tons and tons of trauma. And so when I started, it was really like, I believed I was this, you know, I just say it bluntly, like this trashy, this white trash welfare girl who was stupid and only good for my boobs. Like that's basically the training I got my whole entire life. Wow. And I was easily discardable. And like, if anybody was going to make it, it certainly would not be me. You know what I mean? Make it whether it was to a happy life or successful, whatever it was, it like just wasn't going to be, I was always going to struggle. And I just started one step at a time. I started, I went, I remember I went to a community college and I was like, holy crap. Like I got into community college and it was the greatest thing ever. And then I was getting A's and I was like, huh, this is easier than I thought. And then I kept getting A's. And then I went to a state school and I was like, oh my God, I got to do a state school. And then I got A's and then I got accepted to the nursing program. And then I walked away from the nursing program, and went to university. And it was like, I just kept one step at a time beginning to believe in myself and challenge all of those old stories and beliefs. And, um, you know, I went into neuropsychology and left because I realized I was going to spend my life in a lab. And it was, I remember it was so hard because for the first time in my life, I had kudos. Mm. The time in my life, people were like, oh, Mandy something. She's in neuropsychology at a university. Right. Yeah. And I walked away from that. And I remember just the sadness and the just like everybody was disappointed in me. But I, I knew that wasn't my life. I just, all I did from the very beginning was just take one more step and then believe in myself a little more and take one more step and believe in myself a little more. So then I became a health coach because I was bulimic for 21 years. And wow. it almost killed me multiple times, like multiple. I was throwing up blood, heart palpitations. It was just my way of managing the anxiety. And then um, I became a health coach, and everyone thought I was absolutely nuts. And basically, this is a crapshoot, and you're just squirreling out, and you never commit to anything. Mm. And then I started to have a, a minimum of success, like four thousand dollars a month or something, which was actually extraordinary for health coaching coming yep. out with the wave that was coming out. So everybody sort of turned to me and said, uh, you know, like Mindy, how are you, like, how are you having success? And I really legit was like, I don't know. What are you doing? What am I doing? What's the difference? What are you thinking about this? What am I thinking? And I got really clear, really quick, same problems with everybody. Mm -hmm. So I, I coached them on it and all of a sudden they started making money, making money and the business just exploded year one, the year I went off of welfare, 500 K year went the, the, organically the company went global this is not mandy figured out how to do that there's no way i could have figured that out i had zero experience i was a freaking nanny right. five hundred dollars a month is the most i ever made and i thought that was tons of money it was really just we started doing life together me and a bunch of other incredible people i saw their gift they saw my gift we teamed up and we just high-fived each other hey i do better when i'm around you so i'm gonna stick with you and and we just started doing life together and the rest just Right. Absolutely. That's amazing. 
So, okay. So let, I want to dig into like, cause here's what I think happens with women. Like, and I'm going to say us, because again, like adversity, we blow past because we've done so much work on our past, mm. we blow past it. And so my, my challenge is always, I say, well, if I can do it, you can do it. And what, what I forget, I think, and what maybe we miss is that the, the us is 20 years before us still don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. So it's like, I, cause a, a lot of successful women will say that it's, it's, well, I had this and I made it. I don't, and I can't consciously remember why I knew that, that there was more. I don't know if you remember, maybe you can say, cause here's what I know is a lot of women, twenties, thirties, forties are struggling so hard right now. Yeah. knowing their life's not what it, they want it to be. They're afraid they've had challenges their whole life, etc. So I will look at it and I'll go, but dude, I did it. So just let's fucking do it. But that's, I'm being ignorant to the fact that they're not where I'm at men, mindset wise. And I don't remember what I, I just remember always thinking, honestly, even from like my parents were alcoholics and I was getting abused. And I remember even thinking as a teenager, this is not right. I didn't know why it wasn't right. I didn't know anything except this is not right. And that was the thing that kind of kept me chugging along eventually till I found Tony Robbins, Byron Katie, all those teachers. But do you, can you look back at that time in your life? Cause you just, well, like you, you did, you blew right by it. You're like, Oh, it was blah, blah, blah. It was hard. But then, so, cause you were on the other side of it. Can you look back and maybe look at any parts where you had that conscious thought of fuck, like I need to, I need to change this and maybe give people an idea of, a yeah. place to start? That's a really amazing question. I mean, I think the moment of awakening was after I attempted suicide when I was 30. So I had two children and had somehow believed a story. So when I was a child, not to get into it, but I was really taught that there was demons that attached themselves to us. And like, I was sexually assaulted and abused my whole life. And that demon was with me and like drawing that in for my kids. And I knew, it was, I knew it was shit, but I was just taught that every day of my life when I was a kid. So somehow subconsciously, when I really was getting beat up, uh, you know, some, a big event happened and I was really getting beat up and that slipped through. And I really believed that my kids were better off without me, that they would be safe if, if I took my own life. And that was really an awakening for me. That was the moment I was like, this has to change. Something has to give. And I looked around like all these people giving me advice. They're not freaking happy. They're suffering right. miserable. Their, their marriage is crap and they just keep killing themselves. We have to stay together because we have to stay together. And it was like, nobody's thriving. And I remember just getting so pissed and just be like, where are the happy people? Like where right. on the planet are actual happy people? And that's when I just, it was like, it, I feel like I was just like Moses parting the sea, like, like this like yeah. sonic boom went out. Just like everybody just like, and I went through this like, fuck you phase. Like, just like, don't, like, I don't want to hear it. I don't care. I don't want a life like you. Just shut the fuck up. Like, that's just the phase I went through. And I remember like really seeking where are the actual happy people? And that really led me into uh, beginning my first like self-development kind of course. And the thing that I latched onto in the very beginning was it wasn't like, oh, I have to shift my mindset and I have to do all these things. The first thing I noticed was I'm very uncomfortable being happy. Mm. Oh my God. Yes. I was so on like crawling right. Like at the end of an event, they wanted us to dance and just flea throw and dance in front of everyone. And I was like, please don't make me do that. <laughs> right. Well, in our masculine, there's no fucking way that's happening yep. at all. And look what we did in December. Dance yep. like fairies. For, I feel like, uncomfortable as shit. So was I until but the I last did. song. Yeah. The first two songs I was like, mm, ugh stop and then the third one I was like oh fuck yeah <laughs> and I just went to town but that's it's true but did you ever, do you ever find that like this was my this was my emotional home as Tony talks about was crisis if things were too calm around me holy fuck did I stir shit up I still do it sometimes and that to me is like that part of me was the hardest thing I the hardest addiction to let go when things were too good what like same thing I'm happy this is not right. I better make shit unhappy right now. Does, did that ever happen to you? Yeah, I still do it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It, when I look back at, like if there was one thing that I would say took me through it all, it was, it was this ability to, to shut everybody out and keep trusting that 
there was something more. So no matter what it looked like to everybody else, it looked like I was just non-committal and bouncing and being reckless. But I was like the second, like, for example, when I was at community college and I first went for a physical therapist assistant, I learned that it was $13 an hour. But then I learned, oh, physical therapy assistant doesn't lead to physical therapy, which is way more money. And then you can own your own business and make way more money. And I just learned you're capped at $13 an hour. I, I quit that day. Boom, done. So like I had the balls to say, I don't want to be stuck at $13 an hour. It's not worth it for me. And I gave myself permission to quit. I wasn't smart enough to see ahead. I just mm -hmm. kept making moves and making decisions. And I understood I'm going to make a decision and it might be the wrong one, or I might not like it. Then I'll just make another decision and, sh and shift. And even though everyone around me kept saying like, oh, they kept getting so annoyed and judgmental. I knew the second I saw a hole to go to the next level, I gave myself permission to take it, no matter what that looked like. I just didn't care. I just kept moving to the next hole that I could see. And I still do. And yeah. I, I have learned that, you know, you can go too fast. For four years, I couldn't go too fast. But in December, I learned, oh, you can go too fast. You can try to calibrate too fast and your ego gets in the way. There's mm. a big difference between trusting your instincts and taking that one next power move, no matter what it looks like or how much your body's screaming or how uncomfortable you are, you take that one next power step. There's a big difference between that and trying to like prove something or show something off or keep a certain you know pace that you've had or whatever other bullshit that you might feel pressure to just dismiss and like go back to that what's the one thing today that one power move that i can make today and in essence it's basically understanding that you only have right now <laughs> like literally there's only right now because yep. when you get to the next like oh i got to the next place that's now you're at the future the future just feels like right now and once you've made that power move that's gone so if you're just like what's the one power move today if I do that one power move today, no matter what is screaming at me or freaking out, I'll have become the woman who made that power move and I'll know how to handle the next thing. Yep. So I don't need to know anything except for how to just make this one power move. And that woman just got strengthened one more step and she'll know how to handle the rest of them. And, and I, I think just, what, yeah. sorry, I was just going to say, I think the beautiful thing that you're talking about really is your head and your heart. Like your head is telling you to go physical therapy assistant. Your heart's like, holy fuck no. And I think we, we get so tripped up in, in trusting that. And I think once you lean into the feminine, that's when you start to trust. Like, cause, cause here's the truth about it. When I look at you, I can't understand how you haven't been this crazy, powerful, successful person. Like when you talk about your past, it doesn't register with me. And I would say you were probably now in your heart. And back then you were probably more in your head trying to do things that you thought were the right thing and things that people told you to do the right thing but now you're fully engaged inside your heart and I'm and I always say like we can we're capable of living there as women but we do have to go into our masculine to make decisions about business and to get shit done and make our power moves but it's interesting to me like how how quickly we can like four years isn't a long time but how quickly you can shift a life once you get honest, authentic in your fucking power inside your heart. It's, it's, uh, even now, like I have my content writing company and my passion's not there. My passion is here and mm. things are moving at a much faster pace now because mm. I'm in alignment and, and I'm, it's heart centric and all that kind of stuff. So what? so tell me what your feelings are, feelings are on feminine and masculine energy. Like if you had to give, cause like, let, let's pretend that the women listening don't really know what that is. We know what it is, I'm but let's pretend they don't. So I don't know. Me. I'm going to ask because nothing has ever been more discombobulating to me than this whole masculine feminine thing. First right. it was like, you have to learn how to be feminine and how do you feel? And I was like, I feel like I just need everybody to shut the fuck up and I need to go. <laughs> and my coach was like, that's not a feeling. I'm like, Oh, trust oh, me. Feel it. <laughs> Yeah. That is definitely a feeling, but that's exactly how I feel. And they were like, that is not a feeling. And I was so confused. Like, but that's how I feel. I, like they were pissing me off. I was just like, well, I don't get this. And it was so, I remember like recording things and sending it and they're like, oh my God, could you please stop? And I was like so mortified because I was just wanted to understand what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> and I remember like, I first started to like, like, okay, I heard some, I heard something. I don't remember who said it, but they said, whatever your initial feeling is, like everyone shut the fuck up and you glass of wine. That's my initial feeling. Go six layers beneath that. That's mm. how you feel. And I was like, well, okay, that's like tangible. So I was like, I feel like that. Why do I feel like that? Because it's loud in here. Okay. Why does it bother me that it's loud in here? Well, because it's loud in my head. Okay. What's loud in your head? And I just kept going and going until I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, 
I'm anxious. What are you anxious about? Like, oh, I was getting to feelings. Like, okay, this is what they're talking about. I'm anxious. What am I anxious about? Well, you know, my ex said this conversation about this kind of thing and it really threw me for a loop and I'm feeling like this thing might happen and like, that. oh, you have to have a conversation about that. Oh, but I don't know how to handle that. Oh, you right. want to the words to say in this kind of circumstance. The Mandy today doesn't know how to handle the circumstance, but that's learnable. Oh. Did you not take a deep breath when you got to that sixth layer? Because that's, I find that I go, <sighs> once I get there, after you know, digging and digging. Not, not then. No. Then, I, I was just like a dog with a bone. I mean, if I'm being really honest, I didn't really learn how, it. I never I didn't know how to be in my feminine or to come from my heart until my third year in business. So mm -hmm. it took three years to really freaking understand this. I mean, it was that confusing to me. I had never been in my body. I had never been safe to be in my body. I never identified feelings, let alone learn how to note them and be neutral to them. Like I had no freaking clue. It took me three years of just being able to calm down enough to hear what my body was saying to me. And it really shifted. This is what I wish somebody had told me if I was starting over. It shifted when I understood the concept of like the body always wins. So like mm. those are, I don't know how someone smarter probably says it better, but like to me, it's like the, the standard is the body always wins. So if I start to feel something, everything else gets to go to like everything goes screw. If I'm feeling anxious, like the standard of my company, no matter what I'm doing, like let's say if before this call, I had like something come up and I was feeling anxiety and I was feeling like I had to push myself to do this. I wouldn't do it. I would have rescheduled this call. I would have told you the truth. I wouldn't have made up an excuse. I would have said, I'm feeling anxiety today. The standard is I don't push myself past that. I'm going to need to reschedule this. Yeah. But I trust myself to do that now. But if I had known back then, anytime you feel really bad, it matters. And there's something there that gets to shift or you get to learn or you get to do like, once I got that, it was like, Oh, and you know, back then everything feels like shit, kind of. Mm -hmm. You're just constant trauma and overwhelm. So it's hard to know where to begin. But my encouragement is you don't have to do it perfectly for it, for it to work. Like right. you can do it with one a day, two a day. You can just take two of those moments and try to get clear. What was the thing going on? What feels jarring? What feels bad about this? Like, what, is there a conversation? Is there something you're ignoring? Are you lying about something or being dishonest? Like, what is the thing that's causing that bad feeling? And each time you practice, you're just going to get better and better at it over time. And there's no rush because every time you do it, your life just gets better and better. And that's all that matters. And it, and it is like, it's like peeling things off. Like when I start, and that's, I love that you brought that up because it is, it, it's in your body. That's the thing for me. It's like when I start to feel anxious or, and I'm certain like, again, full disclosure, I'm, I'm not perfect at it yet. I'm, I'm still learning. I think I'll be learning forever. But I, when you get that, like, or I'm starting to get like fucking pissed about something. It's like, the the feminine in me now has to instead of trying to tuck it away and just pretend it's not there i have to sit with it and that's the thing getting quiet not for me very very hard i'm okay at it okay at it now but i didn't like what was going on up here so i did everything i could to distract from that and sitting still and now i will like there's times when i will not do it there's times when i will not sit still and sit, and sit quietly with my thoughts they scare me sometimes but if I get into my body, if I start moving it, if I jump on the rebounder, if I just get up and go, I can take deep breaths and I can start to figure out what's up, what's happening. But for a long time, I, you just stuff it away. And I think that's why women we experience anxiety at such a high level, depression at such a high level, because we're not honoring the okay. feeling in here, you know, just sitting still with it. And so part was really trusting that doing that would bring success. I mean, that was right. the real contract, right? It was like nothing in me could comprehend how that would bring me the safety and security and freedom and ability to protect my children and the fact that my kids would never have to stand in a welfare line. Like I just couldn't put those two together. So I did for the first three, three years of my, my business, I did just like drive and I was so driven by like creating a different life for my kids and this masculine push while I was stumbling madly through this whole trying to figure out the feminine thing. And I learned something really great at HCI when I went there to, to do holistic health coaching. And that was basically just this, I don't remember exactly how they did it because I've done it for so many years that I guess it's become my own. So I don't know if it's the exact same, but it was basically like, I feel anxious about, write it down. I feel sad about, write it down. I feel angry about, write it down. I feel apathetic about, write it down. I feel uh, happy, excited, 
um, the unrealistic expectations I have right now of someone else, of me, write them down. Uh, the, the realistic expectations I'm now going to set are write it down. And I just started poking around trying to identify the feeling of that emotion in my body rather than just constant overwhelm and like red zone, red buttons being hit every second right. of my life. And that really helped me a lot in the beginning. So if, if you, so what would you say to yourself, let's say 20 years ago, knowing what you know now about, so, so let me, first let me ask relationship wise, are you in a relationship? Are you single? Dating. Oh, you are. Okay. I asked for a divorce a year. I moved to Florida and three months later asked for a divorce. Okay. So, so in your, so in your marriage, let's talk about that for a second. Cause that's part of, you know, part of the thing that I'm learning right now is I'm in a, I came back after date with destiny and I got back together with my ex husband mm -hmm. and it was really blissful in the first month. And now there's some challenges. If you read my <laughs> blog, you can see what I'm thinking. Um, but I came back understanding that I was in my masculine since 10 years old and mm -hmm. I was always had to be in control and I always had to get shit done. And if I was in control, shit was going to hit the fan because it did. I got that message as a kid. If I wasn't in control, parents were going to do this, that, the other. So in the marriage, that's how I showed up. He came to me in his feminine. I came to him in his masculine. That's why we were attracted to one another. And then the polarity was nothing after a while of that game. So when you look back at, at relationships you've had in the past, like, do you see it now differently than, than you had before you learned about masculine feminine energy? Like, did you see it showing up? Like if you had to look back and be like, yeah. I could see why he was more feminine in that moment and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to say the honest thing that just came to mind when you said that. Hashtag raw talk. Um, what I learned was I was right. I mean, it makes sense that I was in my masculine because until recently when I started dating a higher caliber of man, I don't want to say it that way. It's not like my ex was a low caliber man. We just both were in our trauma. I mean, he had his own trauma. He's a great man. He just, he wasn't safe to be feminine around. And what I learned okay. was, hmm, no wonders it was so hard for me to, to be in my feminine because there's no way I would ever felt safe being feminine around any of those men that I had been with in serious relationships with. And I see how easy it is to let myself, it's still uncomfortable. Like I started dating, it was like anything romantic made me want to die. Just like, oh my God, I want to die. But now I'm like the most sensual, romantic, like this French man bought me flowers. They're beautiful flowers sitting right here and wine. And like, and, and I, <laughs> the first time I went on a date, I have to tell you this because it's the best story ever. So after being in my masculine relationship for so long, 14 years, and I finally got out, I started dating right away because I had been so done with that relationship for so long. I just didn't realize it. Um, and then I remember the first time I went on a date with this very sensual, romantic man. And so he dropped me off and he's driving away and he blows me a kiss and I throw deuces up and he goes like this, listen to me. So he's like, literally the <laughs> I've ever seen in my life, right? So I throw deuces up and he goes like this. <laughs> you want to know his response? His response is, <laughs> and I was like, what? And he was like, that's all? <laughs> oh God, that's amazing. That's <laughs> the so best horrible. thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and to blow him kisses and I was like, <laughs> like, yeah, it's so uncomfortable. And I was like, I know this feeling. This is the dancing in public. This is the freedom. This is the happiness. This is the, this is just your new uncomfortable suit you're trying on, Mandy. And it was right. like dance and sensuality and like being a woman. And now it's like so easy. I love doing it. I'm so grateful. But uh, I've been clunky at everything along the way with this feminine journey. That's, I think we all are. And I think that, that there's a myth that it's smooth because it's not. Like it's, it's not at all. It's no, so, I it's, put myself to sleep every day for six months dating. It's at looking disgusting. At myself, reflection of myself. I cried every night. Ah, when am I going to stop being so embarrassing? I know it's, <laughs> and but, and it's funny you say that because for and I'm laughing because you're speaking directly to my soul right now, <laughs> like forever and even now a bit, but. Like, and my daughters, this is the truth though. Here's the real talk is like, I raised a, a, but a little army of soldier men and they're all girls. And I thought I was raising strong women and I wasn't, I was raising men and, or women to parade as men. And so my older, so not my stepdaughter, but my middle two, they hate anything romantic. 
and I was hating anything romantic. Like if anybody did anything remotely mushy, I'd be like, like I just drank pickle juice or some shit. I was like, oh, and I was embarrassed, like so, so embarrassed. And one day they said it to me and I was like, holy shit, I'm like that too. And then now knowing and learning what I've learned, I'm like, oh fuck. Like that's them not in their feminine at all. And I've said that to them. And so now we actively together, the three of us work at it. And my older daughter, she's been on the show twice, Amanda Giroux. Um, I've had her on before I learned about this. And actually my middle Sydney's coming back on this ne uh, next week to talk about, cause she's, she's having her own challenges. She shows up in relationships as a, as the masculine and she, the fucked part is she knows it now and she's still having a hard time going back out of it, but that's a good, so ladies who are listening, if you get squirmy and like feel icky when a man is trying to be romantic, that is a giant fucking flag for you that you are in your masculine. Because a woman in her heart loves it. And also though, sometimes you're just not comfortable around that man and you can trust them. Yes, yep, that's true too. But if it's every guy and all the time, you know that you're in your masculine. <laughs> or have a shitty picker. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, so, so let's talk a bit about the ways that you get into your feminine with or without a man in your life, because that's the reality. A lot of times we're not with a guy. So I cry yeah. all the fucking time. Crying's the best. All the time. Somebody, I was on an interview last week and someone asked me, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago. I'm horrible at time. This has been pointed out to me. Many also times. hashtag, uh, quarantine. I don't even know what fucking year it is anymore. So good on you. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, uh, I know. Yeah, that's true. Um, wait, what was I saying? <laughs> what are you... Oh, you're on, a, on an interview. And how do you oh, get into yeah. your feminine? No, no, no. Someone said, what's the most powerful thing that you do in your life? Like if you could say one thing for oh, someone. Oh, crying. Yeah. I'm crying. I just cry all the time. I remember I never used to cry in front of my kids. The first time I cried in front of my kids, they both were like, and they just started cleaning the house. They didn't ask <laughs> me why. They both did. And I was like, I just. Oh. Just, <sighs> okay. oh that's awesome I'm doing this again like literally they both just started cleaning like they didn't know what to do and then I went through the journey of, of letting them know like like yeah mom's human I, I cry these are my emotions it's like laughing imagine this is why I said to myself I said this to my daughter imagine living your whole entire life suppressing your laughter yeah no 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 that's the same thing as suppressing crying and what does yep. a woman do when she starts crying what's the first thing that she says sorry sorry Fuck sorry. Yeah. That, it's like saying sorry for laughing. It's so ridiculous. It's so, it's so dumb. So, you know, then I went through a journey of like, you know, crying in front of a man. If he hurts my feelings instead of like getting defensive and fighting back and like just crying. And you know what? If I cry in front of that man and he makes me feel unsafe, he just exposed himself. That's yep. not something you want to not know. I would like to know that. So I started giving myself permission to cry. Cry anytime I want to. Cry on a Facebook Live. Cry in the middle of a training. Cry in an interview. Cry wherever. I'm just crying all over the place. Cry in the grocery store. Cry in front of my kids. Cry in front of the new guy on a date. I just cry. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. And I love what you just said there. Like if you cry in front of a man and he, um, now there's two things. If he doesn't know any better, he might just squash it. And that he did just expose himself. Yeah. Now he may not know any better. He may not understand how to hold space. He may not understand any of that, but if he does, and he still does that, that is a super good indicator of this man's not in his mature masculine, but like, same thing. I mean, like I've, I cry all the time and it's not just sad cries it's happy cries like i've uh, there's a couple times already knows why cries <laughs> right like i've already almost cried a couple times in this interview but i'm trying to like get you know get us through the hour or whatever but like it's so cathartic and i think that's that's a really interesting part is that as Sorry. mothers we think we that's okay. um, as mothers we don't think that we should cry because that shows weakness that shows blah 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 but i think in, oh, in yeah. the, I'm glad you said that because you know what I ended up saying to my kids I just gotta plug my computer in was you know mom's okay I'm just feeling emotions I don't need like I don't need anything I'm good I'm just yeah. processing my emotions like mom's okay and they yeah. learned like, oh someone can be crying and be okay mm -hmm. and to cry, cry is okay because that's important I think men especially right like your son's 19, 19 or 17 17. 17 and he just left did he cry when he left home I know I know <laughs> I have two out of the house. One more is, I think, on her way to moving out soon. So it'll just be one little one left. But I'm okay with that right now. It's fine. Oh, look, I broke the day he left. 
And then the next day I was sad and all, just like three or four days, I was really discombobulated because seven and him and I crawled out of hell together. I mean, yep. um, did. And, uh, and then the fifth day I was like, Oh my God, there's no piles of laundry or piles of moldy dishes or cause he leaves his dishes in his room for like four days. Yeah. I'm not that up and like I was and then he doesn't eat I was like oh my god I can have leftovers in the fridge and it was just like every day there was some new amazing thing about what I said left and I was like this is amazing <laughs> yeah it's okay to be happy moms it's okay because they're going anyway right like that's the thing we could sit and that's the mindset work right we can sit and be sad or we can sit and be grateful and grateful there's fucking leftovers once in a damn while now like that's something to be grateful for <laughs> so <laughs> Tell us a bit about your dating life then. So you say this guy's really romantic and whatever, like hot in the beginning, was it like, were you still kind of like ick or were you right out of the gate? You were like, I love this, he, him and his masculine and I'm appreciating oh, it. Or were, I told you that I threw deuces. I mean, outside, okay, right. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I was like, it was like so uncomfortable. I wanted to die. But no, even in the beginning, I mean, I remember the first guy that I went out with was this uh, Scottish guy. And I remember he was like running around the city trying to find this like really amazing place. Cause you know, these guys see me online and they think like, oh, this woman must just know her worth and her value. Hell no. I have right. a long journey ahead of me, right? So I just remember the first time he even paid for my dinner, I was so uncomfortable. And the second date when he went to pay again, I like yelled at him and I was like, no. And I like put my car down and he was like, he jumped. I mean, these healthy men have these men that really are in their masculine. They're these safe, healthy men. Their reaction is so, oh my, I'm so grateful for the jarring way that they just respond to me. So I can be like, oh, noticed. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll sit back down now for just a second. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I, I, that's wicked that you say that because here's like, I think the conversation that we all have is that no one can handle us because we are strong ambitious driven impact and mission people it's hard to you know we think it's hard to find but it's it's not i imagine more like i remember that particular man he was like the the um the co-ceo the whatever he was yeah no he was the ceo of this huge like athletic place or whatever and i remember thinking like why would he want to go on a date with me hmm. like it's so i was just so like why would normal healthy men want to date me? Like that was really, that was just the wiring. That was the story. That was the, and I really stretched myself and pushed myself. I'm not lying when I said I cried myself to sleep every night. I did because I was just so horrified by my uncomfortability, my lack of worthiness. My, I mean, it was just reflected back to me, but I was like, no, no, no. I found this deep dark hole that I'm going to fill with light. And I just kept exposing myself and exposing myself and exposing myself. And there's still places I want to go. You know what I mean? Like, um, now I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm, I love romance. I love sensuality. I love sweet and tenderness, but I still haven't learned how to like snap on that lingerie and dance around like I'm sexy. Like, I don't know how to do it. That's my next level of like super uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's always just a growing journey of learning how to embrace and embody my feminine in a way that feels good for me. I also don't embody any kind of should. Like if it doesn't, mm. feel good, just because someone else says that's feminine and that's what a feminine does, I'm still Mandy. And if it doesn't feel good to me, I'm not going to do it. And if I change my mind next year, then I change my mind and I'll do it then. But I really just let it be real for me. You know what I mean? And that includes in my company and my business and everything that I do, you know, surrounding how I build my company, refusing, absolutely refusing, even though I tell you the truth, I shit my pants every time because it feels like, oh, it doesn't feel secure. It feels scary. Right but I refuse to commit myself to anything in my company that feels like that masculine push. I will do it anytime I want to, but I will not design a company where that's required. Right. Yeah. Um, I literally just wrapped a, a blog post on that today, just like before this call and I called it, uh, I'm a boss bitch. Wait, what? Because there, there is this idea okay. that we have to be ball breakers and we have to be like, and in the post I say, you know, it, it's not, um, required to be a dickhead just because you're a woman. We, we don't have to out dickhead the guy. Like there's so, you're more resourceful. I feel like when I'm, when I'm dipped into my feminine and it's not so much when I'm executing, when you're executing, you still have to be the hunter and like get shit done. So that's, that's not what I'm saying, ladies. It's more really about when you're designing the company, like I'm designing the company so that always show up with kindness even if, I mean, in my other company, I've had to let people go and I do it with kindness. You don't have to be like, you know, 
like, I think that's, that's the fucking power of women and yeah. power of women in business, because it's natural to us to be thoughtful. It's natural to follow our intuition. It's natural to be vulnerable and nurturing. Mm-hmm. And those are all feminine quality things and building companies like that, that's how we're going to change the world. That is it. That is the, the golden secret to all of this. If you're in your healthy, you know, uh, mature masculine as a woman, cause we have both, I always say that. And then you're, and you're not a wounded masculine and you're this, you're secure and you're feminine. Holy shit. That's magic. That's Stop. magic. Totally. And that circles back to that, that like the thing that I learned in the beginning, it's like, this was my shortcut because my brain and my body was like, well, I don't really get this. Like if someone out there feels like, but how do you do what you just said? My shortcut was this. And I will tell you the courage that it takes to do this mm-hmm is next level, but we are more than capable of doing it. It's just a choice that we get to make. And that was telling the fucking truth. Mm. So basically learning if someone does something that I feel like I have to put my foot down and get back to them. Like I, when I first moved to Florida, I transitioned the whole company from Rhode Island to Florida and I hired a new CPA and she totally screwed me. She charged me like $12,000 to do my taxes. It was completely ridiculous. Holy shit. For a company like mine, it's probably $3,000 to do my taxes. So I thought it would be a little more because I transitioned. She charged me $12,000. So my instinct was to be like, don't fuck with me. Right. But what was the truth? So like your instinct is to do this, but my shortcut to embody my feminine is just stop and be like, tell the truth. Tell the truth about how that makes you feel. Tell the truth about what's really happening inside your body. Tell the truth about what you're really thinking. Just tell the fucking truth. And if we just learned to have more authentic, all we're doing is telling the truth. If you think about it, it's just telling the truth. And yes, we know that it's mastery to go from being reactive. That's like, that's like being a child or being reactive. It's, it's something to outgrow. We all do it. Hashtag human, but it's not ideal and it's not okay. We need to be more authentic. And that is the shortcut to everything. Just tell the truth in the moment about how that reaction or response made you feel. So when I wrote back to her, instead of doing the like hardball, basically don't fuck with me, which I could have done really, really well. Cause I had done it my whole life. Uh, I just told her the truth. Like I moved from Florida. You're my new CPA. I thought you did a really great job, but you know, I'm, I always paid $2,500 for my taxes. And I feel I'm, I'm, the first thought was like, wow, she took advantage of me and I don't want to come at you that way. So I'm just looking for, you know, could you explain to me what's happening here? And the truth was she did screw me over. She didn't have any justification for it. And I just let her know that really, you know, I have a whole, I run an entire company, thousands of coaches and powerful women. I would have sent them all to her. I would have trained her how to do the online CPA. I would have sent them all to her because she's this incredible woman. And, and I told her the truth. You just lost all that business. Right. Um, so and here's, you know. here's what I would, I would even challenge is that she was in her masculine and not getting it because she thinks she has to be some kind of, you know, hard ass, this is business and, and all that kind of shit. And like, and exactly what you're saying, like, you're, you'll win some and you'll lose some, but when you, when you go at it, like I, same thing, like somebody will come to us in the other side of my, like for my other company. And, and my instinct is to be like, what the, you know, and lose my shit because same thing. That's what I did my whole life. You barked at me. I was going to bark harder. Yeah. yeah. And once you get qui- yeah. And like, once you get still and really, so if, if somebody screwed me over, it would be, my fear is I wouldn't have enough to, to feed the family. Like if you go down enough layers, what is pissing me off right now is that you're testing my certainty yep. and that doesn't feel good. Yep. And so I'm going to let you know, this is what's happening. You're not, you're, te- you know, and some people get, and some people don't like, even when the coronavirus first started, I sent an email to the, or a, a video to the clients. And I said, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. This is scary. And I get it. And it wasn't us. I wasn't trying to sell it. And I got responses like, holy shit. Thank you mm-hmm. for putting that out there. And it's like, cause I was scared. And uh, truthfully in the first month and a half, I felt really fine. And now the last couple of weeks, not so fine around mm-hmm. that company. Cause it's, it's like, we write blog posts and website content for, for uh, SEO companies. Well, their clients have all stopped using them because there's no work. Mm-hmm. So then the SEO companies aren't using us. So I have to get even deeper into my heart and also trust that I'm going to be okay. The family's going to be okay. We're always okay. Mm-hmm. But the masculine in me is like, holy fuck. And you just want to bah, 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 and go crazy. And, you, and it just never effective. You gave me the discipline to do that. It was this understanding of like, let me see if I can put it into words. It was this understanding that 
there's like a, a thing that I have to deal with or a decision I have to make. And if I don't make the decision or I keep avoiding it or I don't look at it, I'm going to have to keep making that same decision over and mm. over and over. But if I just make that decision or face the thing or do the thing, I'm going to become the person who has that, that experience behind me. Now I've embodied someone with that experience on the other side of that one decision. And that feels like relief. Like each time it's safe for me to look at the thing, to deal with the thing, to tell the truth about the thing, even if I completely fuck it up, it doesn't matter. Cause even that I will now have that experience. The only thing that happens when I don't look at it, don't tell the truth, don't deal with it, don't do it right now, is I keep having to live in the experience of not doing that or having to keep facing that same thing over and over and over every day. And if it's something we hate, we don't wanna face, we don't wanna deal with, all we have to do is deal with it right now. And now all of a sudden you're on the other side of it and you're someone with that wisdom. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, I want that. And so now I'm so decisive. I will yep. do the, face the thing, implement it now because I know the relief and the expertise that comes on the inside of that. So good. Yep. And it, so one of the things we do at one of the Tony Robbins events is unleash the powers. We walk on fire. And I would say that would be kind of a, I don't like I've done it five times. So now I don't feel like it's like, a. you know, I think it's in that think and grow rich. They say, eat the frog. Like what, what, you know, and so walking on fire is not eating the frog for me. It was. And it's funny because even in life, like the first time I did it, I remember I was standing like all day. It's the first day of, of UPW and all day you're preparing for it. And this was me all day. Oh, this is fucking easy. It's no problem. I can do this shit. And literally 30 seconds later, I can't do this shit. Oh my God. <laughs> fuck. And then he would talk a bit more. I'm like, oh, totally. I got this shit. I'm taking my socks off. Holy fuck. Am I walking on fire in five minutes? Like it, and that's, that's how big decisions feel like in your head and, and exactly what you're saying. Like there's, and, and getting those things off your plate quickly. I find like speed in those cases, it, it, it's the decisiveness when I know I need to do something. I heard is like, you make a decision. It's like getting in a car and then, okay, you're driving the car. You got to the place. Like I made the decision. Now here I am. I get out of the car. I don't like it here. Just get back in the fucking car and keep driving. Exactly. No. I know. I know. There's this idea that it's like a sentence, uh, right? Me, but I have in three minutes, I actually have another interview. I have to hop on. Okay. To. Oh, geez. What time are we at? See, I knew this is what's going to happen. Good thing all I, the time. Checked, I wasn't really. Oh, thinking. shit. I love okay. That. So yeah, I mean, we could go on for days. So on that note, let's, let's tell everybody where they can find you. I've actually sent a few people your way already to, to see about joining part of your groups and your mastermind stuff. I think you're amazing. So tell everybody where they can find you and kind of what's next um, for courses that you're doing right now? Sure. Uh, so mandyperry.com, we just did a new, so it's, you know, it's an opt-in on our website, but it's a free gift. So it, you'll see the pop-up there. It's the breakthrough series. I've been getting so much feedback of that serving people. So if that's like a free gift, we have a free tab right on the website that has all the, the free gifts in there. Um, it's funny because the current program that I'm running right now is the ultimate how-to, mm -hmm. but it's literally what the program is, was my epiphany that I refuse to design a company that isn't based around my feminine energy. And that's, wow. that's for men and women because it's just about flow and creativity and all those kind of things. So um, it's funny that you brought that up earlier because I thought, no, that it is that important that it's literally yep. a staple in my company. Um, yeah, so that's the current one going on. And nobody knows this yet, but today um, where, and I actually learned this from Tony Robbins, like that really dropping into I always thought that I was coming from a place of service and I love my people, but I still really, I still had a pattern of uncertainty and, and is this all going to work? And you know, like the welfare dog was chasing me a little bit. Yeah. But I think over this past, actually in the platinum partnership was I've been around these incredible people and I've really learned to just give a ton of value, like a ridiculous, insane amount of value. And the standard of the company, the whole company knows is we give value until it triggers us. And then we give even more. So we mm. have a chip site. That's a, it's a low cost, tons of value membership site that's coming out today. I was crying this morning when I woke up. I'm like, I can't believe we're doing this. We even have a hardship application on there. I mean, it just feels so good. That's so that amazing. is coming up today. Yeah. And, um, and so com slash elite. Okay. Um, and then Facebook, you're on Facebook and Instagram as well. Yep. At Ms. Mandy Perry, M S Mandy Perry. Okay. Yep. Amazing. Well, I get, I mean, have for women only. I know, is yep. your audience all women? Is what? Is your audience all women? No, it's shifting, but predominantly it's, it's women. Yeah. Well, this is for only women, but it's a free Facebook group called the daily raw on Facebook. Okay. Right? Yes. I just signed up for that. All of the things. Amazing. All right, my dear. Well, it was awesome talking to you. I definitely want to have you back on because an hour was too short. 
and, and um, I can connect with you to hear. I want to update on you too. We yeah. talked about me, and I didn't get a chance to hear about you. <laughs> well, we will connect. You need? Do you have a podcast? No, not yet. But I was waiting to have a. You know, it, it's if you have a podcast, it's good to have a lead to, so it'll lead to the membership. Yep. Next. Yep. Ditto. Awesome. Okay. Will you hop on your next call? I love you so much, and I will talk to you soon. Hopefully, I'll get to see you soon at an event sometime. Yay! All right. Alrighty. Have a day. All right. Bye.